Hi, my name is Michael Caduce, and I'm an EMS educator at the EMS Learning Resources Center at the University of Iowa. Today, we will review the assessment and management of a trauma patient. My first step will be to take appropriate body substance isolation, which will include gloves and eye protection. Next, I will make sure the scene is safe for my crew, my patient, and me. Since this is a trauma patient, I will determine the mechanism of injury and establish the number of patients. I will call for additional resources based on the patient's condition and direct my partner to take cervical spine motion restriction. After I have completed my scene size up, I will verbalize my general impression of the patient, including the patient's approximate age, condition, and any observed life threats. Next, I will determine the patient's level of consciousness using the AVPU scale. If the patient's eyes are open and the patient is awake, I will introduce myself. If the patient is not awake or responsive to voice, I will perform a sternal rub or trapezius pinch to see if the patient is responsive to pain or unresponsive. If the patient is awake and responsive, I will establish the patient's chief complaint. Next, I will start my primary assessment looking for any life-threatening injuries. I will start with the airway and assess for patency. If needed, I will utilize an airway adjunct. If the airway is patent and open, I will move on to assess breathing. I will watch the patient's chest rise and fall and assess for breathing rate and quality. If needed, I will supply my patient with supplemental oxygen or assist with ventilations. I will next assess circulation status by checking a pulse via the radial artery or carotid artery depending on the patient's condition. I am assessing the pulse for rate, quality, and rhythm. I will also assess for skin parameters, looking at things like color, temperature, and moisture, and controlling for any obvious bleeding. If needed, I will initiate shock management. I need to remember to address any life threats to the airway, breathing, or circulation as I find them. To complete my primary assessment, I must make the decision if the patient needs rapid transport to the nearest appropriate facility or if I can spend more time on scene to complete my secondary assessment. Hi, my name is Michael with the EMS LRC. What's your name? My name's Logan. Logan, what happened today? I was rollerblading and I fell down. Okay, are there any injuries? What hurts? My knee hurts. I, I think I cut it. Okay. The patient's talking to me. His airway appears to be open. I'm going to assess for breathing. He doesn't appear to be in any distress, but you want to ask. Are you having any difficulty breathing? No, I'm good. Okay. Can I borrow a wrist? I'm going to check your pulse. Yeah, sure. His pulse appears regular. His skin parameters are pink, warm, and dry. I do not find any visible life-threatening injuries on my primary assessment. The patient appears to be a 20-year-old male suffering from a traumatic fall while rollerblading. His only reported injury is a knee injury. His level of consciousness appears to be alert as he made eye contact with me when I approached, and his chief complaint is right knee pain. Following the primary survey, I will attempt to obtain a sample history. This may require me to ask family members or bystanders. Next, I will complete the secondary assessment. This will be a systematic head-to-toe assessment looking for other injuries or life threats. This includes looking for deformities, contusions, abrasions, punctures, burns, tenderness, lacerations, or swelling. Just as in my primary assessment, I need to fix any life threats when I find them. I will inspect and palpate the patient's head, including the scalp, ears, eyes, mouth, nose, and facial areas. I will assess for deformity, crepitation, or painful response upon palpation. I will also assess for pupillary response. I will then assess the neck, ensuring I check for the position of the trachea, any jugular vein distension, and palpate the cervical spine. I will next inspect and palpate the chest for crepitation or painful response. I will also auscultate for lung sounds. 
Following the chest, I will inspect and palpate the four quadrants of the abdomen. I will then assess the stability of the pelvis and, if needed, visualize the genitalia for signs of trauma. I will then assess the lower extremities and will assess distal circulation, motor response, and sensation in both feet. Next, I will assess the upper extremities and will assess distal circulation, motor response, and sensation in both hands. After completing my secondary assessment, I will obtain a full set of vital signs, including blood pressure, pulse rate, and respiratory rate. After completing my scene size of primary assessment, history taking, secondary assessment, and baseline vital signs, I can state my field impression. My field impression should include any injuries I found and the patient's current condition. I can then address any secondary injuries and notify the hospital of my patient's condition and estimated time of arrival. Having no issues or life-threatening injuries with my primary assessment, I'm next going to move into my trauma assessment where I'm going to assess the patient from head to toe. Logan, does your head hurt? No. I'm going to touch your head and just see if I feel anything. I want you to tell me if anything hurts, okay? I don't see any drainage coming from his ears, nose, or mouth. Logan, I'm going to have you close your eyes and hold them tight. Hold them tight, hold them tight, hold them tight. Open them up nice and big. The patient's pupils are equal, round, reactive, and accommodating to light. Anything in your neck hurt? Mm -mm. Okay. I'm just going to palpate here. His trachea appears midline. I do not see any jugular vein distension, and I palpate no step off. Next, I'll move down his shoulders. Logan, anything in your shoulders, anything in your chest hurt? No. I'm going to listen to your breathing. I want you to take some nice, big, deep breaths, okay? Good. Get one more big deep breath for me. The patient has no crepitation on their chest and clear equal lung sounds. What about your abdomen? Does anything in your abdomen hurt? No, I'm good. I'm just going to palpate here and see if I feel anything, okay? I want you to tell me if anything hurts. Okay. The patient has no abdominal pain. His pelvis appears to be stable as he's sitting on it. I'm next going to move into my ext lower extremity assessment. I'm going to palpate down your leg. Anything on this leg hurt? No. Good. Wiggle your toes on this foot for me. Good. I would take the patient's shoe off so I could assess his pulse. He has good motor and sensation. I'm going to assess the next leg. Do you think we can lay this down or is it going to hurt too much? It might, but I think I can do it. Okay. There we go. Does that hurt more? No, it's fine. Okay. I'm going to assess down his other leg, ah. making sure to cut his pants so I can expose the injury site. I'm then going to check his arms. Logan, anything on either one of your arms from your fall? Anything hurt? Wiggle those no. fingers for me. Good. This arm, anything here? Mm -mm. Wiggle those fingers for me. Good. The patient has equal strong bilateral pulses. His motor function and sensation are intact in both arms. I would also check the patient's back to make sure he had no step off and no injuries on his back. I would also assess the genitalia if the patient's injuries warranted it. I do not feel the patient's knee pain indicates that. At this point in time, I would also obtain a full set of vital signs, including blood pressure, pulse rate, and respiratory rate. The patient's injuries indicate he should be transported to the hospital. There's no need to use lights and sirens at this time. In order to complete the assessment of the patient's injury, we're going to take off his shoe and go ahead and expose the injury site. for me? Good. The patient has a strong pedal pulse. He has good motor and sensation. He does appear to have some abrasions to his knee. We're going to apply a bandage and direct pressure to control the bleeding. Logan, do you think if I put this here, you can hold on to it? Yeah. Is it a little sore there? Yeah. Okay. Well, I think we should probably go to the hospital and get it checked out, okay? Okay. Um, make sure that it gets cleaned out and that it doesn't get infected, okay? Mm-hmm. I will need to reassess my patient based on his or her condition and the effectiveness of my interventions. Once at the hospital, I will give a report that includes the patient's condition and any interventions I performed. 
University of Iowa, this is Medic 1. We have a 20 year old male who suffered a rollerblading accident. The patient has knee pain and some abrasions to his right knee. He's alert and oriented with no head, neck, or back pain. The patient's vital signs include a blood pressure of 132 over 96, a heart rate of 88, and a respiratory rate of 12. We are 10 minutes out. Do you have any questions or orders? The assessment and management of a trauma patient should be performed in a systematic, step-by-step -step fashion. Correctly assessing and treating the trauma patient may make the difference between life and death. 